I heard Proverbs 23, 13, and 14 refers to parents using the rod and older children at risk of being stoned as a last-ditch effort to save them. Now, if you're a Bible reader, and I hope you are, uh, Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21, uh, God says to parents, if your adult child is a drunkard and a rebel, that you can take them to the elders of the city and have them stoned. Now, the interesting thing, when you study that stuff in the Old Testament, if you want to know how seriously God takes an offense, obviously it's an offense, uh, find out what consequence he has associated with it. I mean, for instance, if you commit murder, I mean, there's a death penalty. You commit adultery, there's a death penalty. If you steal something, depending on the value of it, you can restore, restore twofold or threefold or, or fivefold. If you lie about somebody in court, you bring on yourself whatever you choose tried to bring in someone else with your lie. You, you know, God uh, has different penalties for, for, for different sins. And the penalty for a parent not taking your adult child who's a rebel and drunkard, there isn't one. Uh, which, means, which basically means God says, you know, yeah, you can do this and you should. But I really personally, uh, I rather doubt very many parents did. You know, I mean, maybe some did. Uh, but I rather doubt it. Here's the thing that's, uh, first off, whoever turned in the question, good job thinking about what you hear. Uh, not everything people tell you is true. Uh, physical discipline is less and less effective as your children get older and older. Physical discipline is way more effective when your children are younger. And so when you hear someone tell you that you ought to be beating your, you know, spanking your 17 or 18 or 19 year old because they're a rebel and a drunkard, you, you know, that ought to think to yourself, that doesn't sound right, and it isn't. Uh, physical discipline's way more effective when your children are young. Um, question number four, how do you go about punishing your children for the same thing over and over again? Uh, I don't want to spank all the time, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, if you are expecting instant results from any discipline, you are over or you are underestimating your child's freedom uh, and their strong will. Uh, discipline almost never just you do it one time and then you're forever everything's good. Listen, there are going to be things you're getting after your kids for, especially if it's some area of their natural weakness. All the time they're under your roof. And, and, and so don't decide something didn't work because you didn't do it once. Um, I will just say, here's a, a principle. The younger a child is, the more their discipline must be physical and given closely to the offense. The younger your child is, the more the discipline has to be physical and close to the offense. You say, why? They don't understand. And if you're disciplining them for something uh, that they don't understand, then you just discipline them for you and not for them. Uh, the older your child gets, the more things you can use as discipline and the more distant it can be from the offense. You say, why? Well, because they understand more. Um, most of the time, spanking, uh, in my opinion, once your child is 9 or 10, uh, I mean, physical discipline should be off the menu. You know, maybe there's a few exceptions to that, but in my opinion, you, you know, that, that's for younger children. Uh, question number, now if you want to spank your 15-year-old, go ahead. You, you know, I, I just think that's not wise. Uh, let me think about it. What 15-year-old, uh, let's make them 16 so they can drive. What 16-year-old who misses their crew for you by 15 minutes wouldn't take two swats in the pain of a moment uh, versus not being able to hang out with their friend for a week or two. You, you, you know, you, you got to be brighter than this. And uh, question number uh, five, how do I contain my anger and yelling when discipline my children? Uh, you need to develop a process that's for your house that helps separate discipline from your anger. Uh, in our house, um, I mean, basically when somebody did something, uh, go to my room, sit in the bed. And, you know, they would go in there, and that is my time uh, or their mother's time to think about what you want to do, you know, uh, what, what's appropriate here. And then I go in the room, sit next to them. I said, do you know why you're in trouble? And make sure they understand why. Uh, what happens when you do this? 
and again, because it should be predetermined what happens when you commit a certain offense. And then basically in our house, we'd make them uh, just lean over uh, my leg. I'd give them one swat, hard on their rear end. Uh, I could count on one hand. The times over all those years, our boys got two, and they never got three. Uh, and they would be crying. I would say, sit there, uh, talk to the Lord, think about it. And then I would leave. And then when they calmed down, I would go back in. I would sit down next to them. And I would say, you know, I really, I don't like spanking you. Please change your behavior. Uh, and never forget, no matter what, you always have a friend in your dad. I probably said that 500 times. And, but you need a process that separates your anger from what you do. Remember, discipline is not about appeasing your anger. Discipline is about uh, doing what your kid needs. Uh, question number six, when and how do we discipline a one-year-old? Uh, we'll talk about uh, starting discipline in, in, in a few moments. Uh, but when your kids are toddlers, there's really two basic lessons you're trying to teach them. Uh, number one, you love them and you're there for them. And number two, you're the boss. Uh, one of the reasons the twos are terrible twos is because when kids are toddlers, the parents let the kids think they were boss. And then at two, the parents start thinking, wow, you know what, I need to be in charge here. And the kid resists no longer being the boss. You know, you make the terrible twos much less terrible uh, by those two lessons. And, you know, those are just really, really in important. Now, I don't personally consider... Uh, you teaching your children the meaning of the word no or stop, I don't consider that discipline. I mean, I'm talking to a young kid, and you smack their hand. They're just screaming, and you smack them. Not bloody their mouth. Just smack them in the mouth or in the forehead, or you give them a swat on the thigh. I don't consider that discipline. You, you know, you're just teaching your kid the meaning of a few words. And by the way, for those of you who don't care, uh, you haven't thought through this. You, you realize your child, when you say no or stop in a certain term, tone, if you haven't taught them that means stop, you realize that sometime in a parking lot, your carelessness could really hurt them. I mean, there ought to be a tone that you have with the word no and stop that your kids, I better immediately respond Dad's going to do something. You, you, you know, this is very important. Um, someone said to be in your child's good memories tomorrow, you need to be involved in their life today. Uh, a couple of thoughts just to leave uh, before we start our lesson like I do every week. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, let your child figure out the weaknesses and humanity of those you've taught them to respect. Uh, and you don't need to point. Uh, here's the second thing. Don't try to be the only authority in your child's life, but make sure you and God are the key ones. Uh, here's number three. Uh, your commitment to Christ and his church ought to be obvious to your children. By the way, it is obvious. Or your lack of commitment. Uh, once your kids get past about the ages of seven or eight or nine, they realize what it takes to make you Stop doing what you say you believe or, or, or that they, they realize. You are teaching them. Uh, we should be in Proverbs chapter 13. Like I said, we're just on week 7. Uh, last week, we established some foundational biblical principles for discipline. You remember, if God disciplines his children, uh, we should discipline ours. And God does. Uh, our second thing, we foundational, our motive ought to be the profit of our children for their good. Uh, not ours. Uh, and the third foundational principle, remember, uh, discipline should be grievous for our children while it's going on. Uh, if it's not grievous while it's going on, uh, then it's not good discipline, uh, nor is it like God's discipline. Uh, which brings us to where we're going to be the next two weeks, Lord willing, anyway. How do we apply these principles as we discipline uh, our children. I don't have my way, but if I had my way, everybody who listened to even one of these lessons on discipline would have to listen to them all. They, they are all dovetailed together, and, and we are so good at taking part of what someone says and ignoring the rest of it, and, and I believe it hurts us. Uh, in your surveys, 
about one half of you have never even considered what the Bible teaches about uh, raising your children. And a little less than half of you have ever even read a book from a biblical perspective of how to parent your children. And if you stop and think about that, about how tragic the lack of interest is in this subject versus how strong our opinions are, there's really a big disconnect. And these principles we're, we're going to talk about, in fact, the ones we talked about last week, they're not up for debate. I, I didn't write them. Uh, they're biblical principles. The principles we're going to talk about today, they're not up for debate either. Now, how to apply these things, you know, there is some discussion, some debate uh, on that. Uh, but these principles are very important. You should be uh, in your Bible in Proverbs 13. Here's the first principle. Start the discipline when your child is very young. Notice in Proverbs verse chapter 13, uh, where we were before and I moved us. Uh, Proverbs 13, uh, in 20, verse 24, it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. That's pretty strong that you need to discipline him. He that loveth him chasteneth him be times. Uh, in my Bible, I've got that word be times circled. Got a little line over to the margin, and I have a little early written in that. Uh, our problem with our Bible is far more our lack of English uh, than it is the difficulty of our Bible. Uh, God says, uh, discipline them early. Uh, turn up a couple pages to uh, chapter 19, Proverbs 19. I hope you read Proverbs regularly. It uh, doesn't matter what your um, pattern is for doing that, but... Uh, in my case, I read 14 Proverbs a month. I read uh, half of a chapter of Proverbs a day. And then in February, I've got to hit every day. And the rest of the month, I have some slack to miss. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 19 uh, and verse 18, it says, Chasten thy son while there is hope, uh, and let not thy soul spare uh, for his crying. Uh, notice that means there's a season when there's hope. And you need to, be ask, need to be acting while there's hope. And notice, you don't stop based on their tears. See, some kids, if you stop based on your kids crying, you're never going to stop right. Some kids cry easily, and you'll stop too soon. Other kids don't hardly cry at all, and you'll give them too much. Your discipline, according to the scriptures... Uh, needs to be while there's hope, be times early, and it should stop uh, at the whatever time is appropriate, not whenever they cry. If you spank them to their cry, listen, there's some kids you're going to hit them too much. And some kids you're not going to hit enough. Uh, some parents, they fail to properly discipline their children because they start too late. Uh, you fail to recognize the nature of your child. Your child has a fallen nature. And honestly, a lot of children are, are bad and rebellious children because they were not disciplined as toddlers. And a lot of teens uh, are bad teens because they were not disciplined as children. Uh, listen, if you wait to too late to start, you just hurt your children. Please don't do that. Uh, always have questions uh, like what age should you start spanking your children? When should we start discipline? Uh, and, and again, I just repeat this. I don't consider things like teaching your child the meaning of the word no or stop. I don't consider that discipline. I mean, smacking a kid's hand. That's, that's not a, the discipline process is more than just a swad. The discipline process is like what I described earlier, something that's appropriate for your home. Here, here's when you start. Start whenever there is willful defiance. Start whenever there is willful defiance. As a parent, one of the things you've got to become good at is recognizes recognizing the difference in when your child is just being immature, every child is immature, and when your child is being willfully defiant, all right? Uh, when someone's willfully defiant, it should bring a very different response than your child is just being childish. They're, they're two different things. Whenever they're willfully defiant, that's time for you to do something. Uh, James chapter 5, another biblical principle for discipline. By the way, that's, this is the class is parenting by the book. Uh, listen, our Heavenly Father is the ultimate parent. There is no parent better than Him. And we are just learning from our Heavenly Father who did, 
entrust us with the lives and the eternal souls of our children. We're just taking stuff from the scriptures and how to handle them. Here's a second principle. James chapter 5, uh, verse 12. James here says, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Notice your yes should mean yes, and your no should mean no. Here's the second principle for discipline. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, don't say no if you don't really mean no. Don't say yes if you really mean uh, no. Your yes should mean yes. Your no should be no. You shouldn't have to say thing. I swear by my mother's grave or I swear in a stack of Bibles. Uh, Jesus said, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Uh, one of the worst things parents do for their children is make threats that they do not follow through on. Uh, it's literally one of the worst things you do. Listen, if, if you're a stay-at-home mom, I get it. Uh, I mean, man, you are there for hours. You are in the trenches battling them. You know, little by little, they're wearing you down. You're wearing them down. I, I get it. It is super, super hard. But one of the best things you'll ever do is just really work on yourself have your yes mean yes and your no mean you, no. I mean your no should not be no unless you ask me 20 times. One of the best things to put in your vocabulary when your kid asks you a question is, let me think about this. Let me pray about that. Let me talk to your dad about that. Do, do, do you understand? All you're doing is, is you are just giving yourself time to really think about what you want to say. You, you know, listen, my, my hand is up. Uh, ever say something in haste that you really later thought, eh, I really probably shouldn't have said that? You, you know, the better we do as a parent with these kinds of things, the more we, we, we help ourselves. Um, you know, when we say something in discipline or correction, it should not be flippant, it should not be careless. It means you and I have to think through what we're threatening or what we ask. Uh, one of the worst things you do along this lines is count. You, you know, you, do you know what you're teaching your child when you count? No, you're not teaching them how to count to three. No, you're not teaching them how to count to five. No, you're not teaching them how to count to ten. What you're teaching them is, is I'm not going to do anything till I get whatever number you pick. That I mean, that's what you're teaching them. I mean, listen, uh, one, two, three, and, and you know good, good and well, they're not going to do anything till you get to the number. So, so don't even start that. Just let your yes be yes and no be no and learn how to give yourself so, so, some time so that you don't just instantly answer everything. It's so, so important. <laughs> See, the bottom line to, to parenting, and we all struggle with it, is we need to be under control. And uh, listen, life is messy. Uh, sometimes we don't feel good. Sometimes they don't feel good. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes they're tired. Sometimes it's been a long day. Uh, listen, life is messy. Uh, it, listen, these Bible principles, they're absolutely true. And I'm just telling you, the more we follow these and l the less we give in to all the day-to-day -day things that go on, the better off our homes and our children will be. Listen, everybody in here understands our, pe our home will be a lot more peaceful if our yes meant yes and our no meant no. Um, someone asked, how do I change our kids only hearing us when we yell? If they're old enough, you just sit down and say, you know, listen, this is what we've done. I've let this go on, uh, I've, and, and I'm sorry, please forgive me. From here on out, I'm going to speak to you in a normal tone, and when I say something, I expect you to do it, and then you do it. See, that's why you need this discipline process. In our case, again, we sent them to our room. And it, it's time. 
It gives them time to calm down, think about it. gives you kind of time to calm down. Listen, there's not a, you're not in this parenting class because, because you want to parent your kids badly. You, you're in here because you really you, you want to be better. Ch church is not the place for everybody with it together. Church is the place for people who want to do better than what they're doing now. And, and I, I know that's who you are. And, and I'm just telling you, this kind of stuff will really help you if you just decide to do it. Um, you're in James... Uh, when we think about how our Heavenly Father disciplines us, uh, one of the things that should affect us is uh, break their will, but not their spirit, not their personhood. Uh, notice what James teaches in chapter 3. He, he says here in verse 8, in James 3, 8, he says, But the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not so to be. Notice in verse 9, one of the reasons that we don't curse people is that they're made in the image of God. See, every human being has value because they're made in the image of God. That's true when they're an adult. That's true when they're productive to society. That's true when they're old and not productive to society. That's true for a child. And, and so if your child is made in the image of God, you, you know what? You need to make your goal to break their will, not their spirit. Uh, while it is true most parents underdo discipline, it is true that you also can overdo discipline and you can break the spirit of your child. And, and that's not good. It's not good for them. Uh, go to Psalm 103. We're just, how does our father handles Our father handles us, you know, like we're made in his image. Wow, I have to get in the right book. Psalm 103. How does our father discipline us? He always remembers we're made in his image. How does our father discipline us? He's patient and long-suffering. Uh, notice in Psalm 103 and verse 13. It says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Do you know why God doesn't crush us when we fail? He remembers our frame that we're dust. And that means you need to remember that your kid is just a kid. Your 5-year-old is not 12. Your 12-year-old is not 17. Remember their frame. Remember that they're just kids. Whatever you do should be age appropriate. Um, if you're here and you're a growing Christian, one of the things that if you stopped and thought about it that you would say is this. Some of the things God is working on in my life today he was just overlooking and not talking to me about five years ago. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's growth. That doesn't mean five years ago that thing in your life was right. It means that God remembered your frame and worked on the things that you needed to work on now. And with your kids, it's got, it's got to be like that. You, you, you know, listen, if you look at everything that's wrong in your kids' list and you've got 80 things, you, you need to find the key things. You know, what are the key things that are going to destroy them? What are the key things that are going to hinder them in life? And you've got to focus on them. Remember their frame. Remember that they're just dust. Uh, honestly, though most parents, I believe, don't expect enough from their children, uh, you can expect too much. Uh, that's one of the reasons Sharon and I were a good balance for each other. Uh, I am unchecked. Uh, can, can be too demanding. Uh, I had high expectations for our children. And uh, it's not like she had, she had low expectations. That wouldn't be fair. But you know what? She was just a lot more gracious and patient by nature. And she had to toughen up some. And I needed to turn the dial back. Remember that they're dust. Uh, I don't like this one, but go to Jeremiah chapter 7. These are just the way... God handles people. And if God handles people like that, then it's probably a good idea for us to handle our children like this. Uh, one of the things that goes on in, in Jeremiah is, is that um, 
God is pronouncing a lot of judgment on Judah because he has warned them repeatedly over the years. And he's just saying, hey, listen, Babylon's going to come. They're going to take you away. I've warned you and warned you and, and warned you. I've disciplined you. I took rain away, uh, uh, all that stuff. And God finally gets to this point in Jeremiah 7, verse 16. God says to Jeremiah, therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up uh, cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Uh, they got to the point where God says, listen, it's fixed. I've warned them. They didn't listen. Don't even pray. Don't talk to me about it. I'm not going to listen. Take discipline to its rightful conclusion. Take discipline to its rightful conclusion. Listen, if you gave them something and in hindsight you realize, wow, that was too much, take it back. Take it to its rightful conclusion. Whatever that is. Listen, if they did something that was genuinely grievous, then what you promised them that's genuinely grievous, take it to its rightful conclusion. Somebody said, how do I stick to the punishment? I said, I will give them. Uh, start by making whatever punishment you give them thoughtful instead of out of anger. Listen, your child ought to have a basic idea of what's going to happen. If I'm cruel to my brother or sister, this is going to happen. Uh, if I'm disrespectful to my mother, this is going to happen. If I was told to pick up the room and did not pick it up, this is going to happen. And I'm not implying those are all equal offense, but you know what? They ought to know what's going to happen. And then you take it to its rightful conclusion. Uh, somebody asked, how do I help myself remember they're just children? That's what the pause is for. Listen, my hand is up that I get angry. My hand is up that sometimes I'm tired and over respond. All of us are like this. And when we just recognize this in ourselves and put this pause in there, it really helps us handle our children better. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Just principles for discipline. Break their will, not their spirit. Do it with patience and long-suffering. Remember that they are dust. Wow, and I can't find it anywhere in here. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Carry it to its rightful conclusion. In Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 12, uh, notice how it closes in the, in the uh, very last verse, in verse 14. It says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Here's the Bible principle. Give discipline in response to everything. Don't cherry pick a couple of things. Give it in response to everything, action, inaction, words, silence, attitude, as much as you can figure out what's going on, heart, the only God knows that with 100% certainty. Of course, your goal in discipline is to reach their heart, but you can't, uh, you can't see that. Um, see, your discipline, uh, when your kids get older, it ought to start out with what I would call a maximum sentence. You know, you do this, okay, you don't get the Xbox for a week. And, man, took all the stuff. Man, I would not, one of the best things about your kid having a cell phone when they get older is you can take it away. L listen, if you as a parent and you have older children, if you haven't identified the things that are grievous to your children, then you haven't, you're not really ready to discipline. You've got to identify what's grievous to them. In our boys' case, taking away friends coming over and taking away their Xbox, uh, man, that was, that was it. Now, if we took away the Xbox for a, a week and they received the discipline well and, uh, you know, they were doing better, uh, we might go to them after four days and say, listen, you guys took the discipline well. Your attitude has been good. Mom and I, are we're, we're just going to have mercy on you. Here's your Xbox. So what are you doing? You're teaching them how our Heavenly Father is. But, but when you do everything you do that's out of control, how do you do that? that that's not the way our Father handles us. Uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. 
These are just biblical principles for, for discipline. Uh, again, there, there, there's no arguing with these principles. They're biblical principles. There's a lot of discussion we could have about how exactly to uh, apply them in our circumstances, and, and that's good discussion. Listen, Sharon and I, a lot of times we do not see eye to eye on, on stuff. That's why we're both there. Uh, somebody turned in the question, it's almost more of a parent, a marriage seminar, uh, should we disagree in front of our children? Uh, what I would say is don't disagree about your children in front of the children. Your child, they will play you and, and get, they, they'll find the parent that's going to take their side. So don't disagree about them in, in front of them. Now, if you have learned how to disagree well about other things, that's a good thing to teach your child how to disagree. Uh, but if you don't disagree well yet, uh, don't do that in front of them either. Uh, Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. He says here, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Notice God says, listen, you do what I say, it's going to be a blessing. You disobey me, it's going to bring a curse. Here's the principle. Use positive and negative motivation in, in discipline. L listen, if all you do is negative stuff, you're missing something. You should have positive things, some things that are clearly rewarded and bring benefits to them, and some things that bring negative things. And, and again, when, you, when your child is two or three, you, you know, you, you're just, you're, you're limited. And you do what you can. And the older your children get, the more things you have uh, in your arsenal. In fact, as far as I know, universally in the Bible, when God says, don't do something, there's a negative consequence. As far as I know, when God says, do something, uh, there's a blessing associated with doing it. Remember, there's positive and negative commandments. And, and that's the way you should uh, parent. Uh, in our house, uh, like when they were little, for their schoolwork, I'm talking like kindergarten when they got just plus uh, and they got check, check plus, check minus. Uh, we would pay them uh, a nickel uh, for a check plus and charge them a dime for a check minus and you got nothing for a check. Uh, now for our two older boys, that worked great. Uh, for Caleb, he's like, man, I don't want to buy schoolwork. Get my change, you can have it, you know. And, and, and you, you know, that's ineffective. For him, what was effective is when he got a bad grade on something, he had to write the right answer twice. That worked for him. And then he learned the things that he got wrong, and it motivated him. You, you, remember, discipline is to motivate your child. You're not doing what works on you. You've got to find what works on them. It should have positive and negative uh, things. And the last thing, and I've just got two, 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 two minutes, um, and here it is, and, and I wish everybody could, everybody in here especially, if you're somebody who tends to be a disciplinarian, if you're somebody who likes structure, uh, th this is the way I'm, I'm, I'm wired. And so this is super important for everybody, but especially if you're like that, Balanced discipline with available relationship. You know, our Heavenly Father, listen, you could rightly say, you know what, he's pretty strict. He's holy, he's righteous, you know. But he balances that with the fact that he wants us and makes opportunity for us to be close. And so as a parent, you got to, man, if you're going to be as strict as you need to be as a parent, it should be balanced with relationship. Uh, in our house, again, because our boys were all strong-willed boys, and by the way, I prayed for that and was glad to have them. Uh, and, and my wife is a gentle soul. Um, this was really important because I had to be the primary discipline. It's not like she did anything. She did her job. She's a great mom. Uh, but for me especially, it was very important. I mean, we'd have boys' night out every week. Sometimes it would have been mom's night off. Um, uh, I did uh, usually once a month with one of them. So two, three, sometimes four times a year, I would just take them out one at a time. It was just me and them, and we'd go do what they want. Um, we spent hours and hours in, in the backyard, uh, man, throwing baseballs, shooting basketballs, 
uh, going to Whitewater, going down the Porcours Trail, and uh, just doing all that stuff, skipping rocks on the water, uh, anything. <laughs> you must balance your toughness, and they need your toughness. Our society is filled with Christian people who are wimps. Women who are not tough, men who are not tough. Toughness is good, meanness is bad. And if you're going to be as tough as they need you to be so they become strong, you need to open a door for them to be close. And you do that, and you'll handle your children much, much better. That's how our Father handles us. And I have to stop. And so you should have a little piece of paper. Write some kind of a question, comment, smart aleck remark. Uh, just write it on that. Drop it in the little box up there. And uh, I'll get them later, and, um, and then next Sunday, uh, Lord willing anyway, start our class off with questions. God bless you. You're dismissed.